In this lesson, we're going to use zero and negative exponents, use the properties of exponents, and solve real-life problems involving exponents. Zero and negative exponents. For any non-zero number a, a to the power of zero equals one. The power zero to the zero is undefined. The number example is four to the zero equals one, and then a to the zero equals one when a is not equal to zero. Okay, and I'm gonna explain uh, how these work in just a moment. For negative exponents, we have, for any integer n and any non-zero number a, a to the negative nth power is the reciprocal of a to the nth power. So the number example is four to the negative second power is equal to one over four to the second power. The algebra version is a to the negative n equals one over a to the n, where a is not equal to zero. So I'm gonna explain why that works right now. So I'm just gonna write a uh, pattern right here. So I'm gonna start with two to the first power, two to the second power, two to the third power, and so on, okay? Well, two to the first power, this is just one, two, so the answer is two, that simplifies to two. Two to the second power, this is two times two, that's gonna be four. And then two to the third power, that's two times two times two. That, this is saying that we have three twos being multiplied. So that's just gonna be eight, okay? Well, if you see this pattern, each time I increase one of these values, I'm multiplying my product by two, okay? But if I go the other way, each time I go to the left, I'm actually dividing this by two, okay? I'm dividing the previous one by two. So by that logic, okay, two to the first power, if I go to the next one, that's gonna be two to the power of zero. Well, if I keep going through this pattern, eight to four to two, I keep dividing by two, this has to be one here. So two to the power of zero is gonna be one. Now, if I keep going, the next number that I have here is gonna be two to the negative first power, okay? And then this is gonna be, well, let's see, divided by two, divided by two, divided by two, one divided by two is one half. And if I go one more, I'll have two to the negative second power. Well, I'm, I'm keeping divided by two over here. And if I divide one half by two, one half divided by two, or half of one half is one over four. And one over four is the exact same thing as one over two squared. And this is all consistent with these properties that we just talked about here. Okay, so that's why zero exponents and negative exponents work the way they do. And we're gonna talk more about that later. For the first example, we want to evaluate each expression. Well, for part A, I have 6.7 to the power of zero, but if you remember, any number that is not zero that is taken to the power of zero, that's just going to be one. So right away, that's my answer, super quick. And then over here, I have negative two to the negative fourth power. Well, if you remember, I can rewrite this as one over negative two to the positive fourth power, okay? Anytime we're dealing with negative exponents, I like to think of it as top or bottom. If I have a negative exponent, I move it either from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top. When I say bottom or top, I mean of the fraction, okay? And then when I move it, I change the negative to a positive, okay? So now this is one over negative two quantity to the fourth power, okay? Well, this is equal to negative two to the fourth power. That's gonna be 16 because negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two equals 16. And since I have an even number of negatives, they're all gonna cancel each other out, so it's gonna become a positive. So this becomes positive one over 16, okay? So now we're done with part B. In example two, we're gonna simplify the expression four x to the power of zero over y to the negative third power. Write your answer using only positive exponents, okay? The reason we say that is that is technically simplified in this case. We have to have everything else simplified and all of our exponents have to be positive and there's only one of each variable here. Anyway, I'm gonna rewrite this as four x to the zero over y to the negative three, okay? Well, I oh, forgot my zero. First thing I notice is x to the power of zero. This is gonna turn into one, okay? So this is gonna be four times one and you could write that, but four times one is just four. So this is gonna be four over y to the negative third power, okay? Well, if you remember, the negative power here, if I think of top or bottom here, well, since I have a negative, I'm gonna change it, but it's already on the bottom of the fraction, so I'm gonna move it to the top of the fraction. So this is gonna be four times y, but whenever I move something from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom, I get rid of the negative, okay? So this is gonna be four y to the positive third power, okay? Now, you could, say, where's my uh, denominator, okay? Well, if there's nothing here, the assumed number 
is a 1. And we don't need that. We don't need a 1 because 4y to the third power over 1 is just 4y to the third power. Anyway, we are successfully done with this one. So we're going to go over some more exponent properties. Product of powers property. Let a be a real number and let m and n be integers. To multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. So if we see this, we have 4 to the 6th power times 4 to the 3rd power equals 4 to the 6 plus 3, which is the same as 4 to the 9th power. Okay, and over here we have a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. Okay, I'm going to show you why that is right now. For this example, if I had 4 to the 6th power times 4 to the 3rd power, okay, if we think of this, if I, if I rewrite 4 to the 6th power, that's just 6 4s being multiplied. So 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, okay? And then I'm multiplying this whole thing times 4 to the 3rd power. Well, that's 3 4s being multiplied. So 4 times 4 times 4, okay? Well, all I'm doing is multiplying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, fours together, okay? I'm adding the amount of fours I'm multiplying here, which is six, plus the amount of fours I'm multiplying here, which is three. So it's a total of nine fours being multiplied, which can also be thought of as four to the ninth power. So that's why that property works. Next is the quotient of powers property. Let a be a non-real number, and let m and n be integers. To divide powers with the same base, subtract their exponents. Okay, so 4 to the 6th over 4 to the 3rd equals 4 to the 6th minus 3, and that's 4 to the 3rd, okay? And then for algebra, a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n, where a is not 0, okay? And I'm going to show you why that works right now. So for our, that example, we have 4 to the 6th over 4 to the 3rd. Well, that's the same thing as 6 4s being multiplied. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 over 3 4s being multiplied, 4 times 4 times 4. Well, if you think about it, since I have a 4 here on the top of the fraction and a 4 here on the bottom, I can cancel these out. Well, I can cancel these out too and cancel these out. So all I'm left with is just 3 4s being multiplied. Okay, So basically what I'm doing is I'm canceling out however many I can on the top and on the bottom. And I'm left with three fours on the top of this fraction. So that's just four to the third power. And that's why that property works. The next property we're talking about is the power of a power property. Let a be a real number and let m and n be integers. To find the power of a power, multiply the exponents. Okay, so if I have four to the sixth power all to the third power, that is four to the sixth times three, which is four to the 18th power. Here, I have a to the m all to the nth power is a to the m n power, okay? I'm going to show you why that works right now. So I'll use this example. 4 to the 6th power to the 3rd power. Well, this is the same thing as 4 to the 6th times 4 to the 6th times 4 to the 6th. Well, if we go back up here, using my product of powers property, I know that when I'm multiplying with the same base, I can add the exponents. So here I'll have 4 to the 6 plus 6 plus 6, but since there are three 6s, I can rewrite that as 4 to the 6 times 3, which gives us to our answer of 4 to the 18th power. So that's why that property works. For example 3, we need to simplify each expression and write our answer using only positive exponents. Well, for part A, I have 3 to the 2nd power times 3 to the 6th power. Well, they have the same base, so I can just rewrite this as 3 to the 2 plus 6th power, which is 3 to the 8th. I'll write that below. Okay, And then I can just simplify this. And you could simplify this doing this out, but I'm just going to use a calculator. And we get our answer of 6,561, so I'm going to write that down. So that's how to do part A. For part B, I have the same base, and this time I have a fraction. And if you remember, I'm going to subtract my exponents. So I'll do top minus bottom. So this is going to be negative 4 
I'll draw a little barrier here. Negative four to the two minus seventh power, okay? Well, this is gonna equal negative five, so I have negative four to the negative fifth power, okay? Well, this is the same thing as one over negative four to the positive fifth power, okay? And then once again, you could do this out as well, but I'm gonna use the calculator again. And whenever our base is negative, it's important to use parentheses. So I'm gonna do negative four, the quantity, to the fifth power. So our answer is gonna be one over negative 1,024. So this is, scroll down here, negative one over 1,024. And now we're done with part B. For part C, I have the quantity z to the fourth power all to the negative third power, okay? Well, there's multiple ways to do this, but what I'm gonna do is just multiply this exponent and this exponent, okay, because I have a power to a power. So this is gonna be z to the four times negative three. Well, that's gonna be z, I'm sorry, I'll write a barrier here, z to the negative 12th power. Well, I can simplify that to one over z to the positive 12th power, okay? And now we're done with part C. So now we have some more properties to discuss. Power of a product property. Let A and B be real numbers, and let M be an integer. To find a power of a product, find the power of each factor and multiply. So three times two, that entire quantity to the fifth power is the same thing as three to the fifth power times two to the fifth power. Algebra, it's A times B, that whole quantity to the power of M is A to the M times B to the M. If you notice, this is very similar to the distributive property. Okay, so you might hear me informally say distribute when I'm describing what to do here. Let me explain why this works right now. So I'm gonna go over here. So if I have three times two to the fifth power, okay, well, this is the same thing as three times two times three times two times three times two times three times two times three times two, times three times two. okay? I have five three times twos. But if you remember, the order of multiplication does not matter. So I'm gonna just group these as all my threes being multiplied together and all my twos being multiplied together. Three times three times three times three times three times two times two times two times two times two. Okay, well this is just three to the fifth power, right? I have five threes being multiplied. So it's three to the fifth times, well this is just two to the fifth power. Two to the fifth. Okay, and that's why that property works. Our next property is the power of a quotient property. Let A and B be real numbers with B is not equal to zero. And let M be an integer. To find the power of a quotient, find the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator and then divide. Okay, so over here I have so over here, I have three over two, that entire quantity, to the fifth power. That's the same as three to the fifth over two to the fifth. And then for algebra, I have a over b to the m power. Well, that is a to the m over b to the m, and b does not equal zero, okay? And let's talk about why that works. It's very similar to this property as well, okay? So I'm gonna scroll down here. You can think of three over two to the fifth as three over two times three over two times three over two times three over two, times three over two, okay? Well, once again, I can just multiply all the tops and multiply all the bottoms, and notice I have five threes being multiplied in the top and five twos being multiplied in the bottom, so this is the same thing as three to the fifth power over two to the fifth power, okay? So that's why this property works. For example four, we're gonna simplify each expression and then write our answer only using positive exponents, okay? Well. Here I have negative 1.5 being multiplied by y in parentheses, and then this whole quantity is being squared. Well, this is when I can take each factor, each thing that's being multiplied, and take it to this power, okay? So I'm gonna draw the arrows like I'm distributing. So I'm gonna zoom in. So that goes there and there. So this is negative 1.5 squared times y squared. Y squared stays the same. Negative 1.5 squared, well, the negative is gonna cancel because I have an even power here. Then 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25. It's gonna be 2.25. You could have done that out or on a calculator if you wanted. And now I have 2.25 y squared, and now we're done with this one. For part B, I have a over negative 10 
to the third power, okay? Well, same thing here. This is gonna be applied to both the numerator and the denominator. So this is gonna be a to the third over negative 10 to the third. And if you think of this, a to the third is gonna stay the same, but negative 10, this quantity to the third power, it's being taken to an odd power. So if I have two negatives, they would cancel, but since I have a third negative being multiplied, it would stay negative. So anytime you're taking a negative number to an odd power, it's gonna stay negative, okay? And then 10 to the third power is gonna be 1,000. So this is gonna be a to the third over negative 1,000, and that simplifies to negative quantity, a to the third over 1,000. So now we're done with part B. For part C, I have 3D all over 2, and that whole thing is to the fourth power. Well, same thing. I'm going to, air quotes, distribute this 4 to the 3, to the D, and to the 2. Okay, so now this is 3 to the fourth, I'll draw a little barrier, times D to the fourth over 2 to the fourth. Okay? Well, 3 to the fourth power, uh, this is going to be 81, because 3 times 3 is 9, and then we have two of those, so 9 times 9 is 81. And then D to the fourth stays the same. And then 2 to the fourth, well, that's 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So this is going to be 81 D to the fourth over 16. So now we're done with part C. And for part D, okay, I have the quantity 2x all over 3, and that is all being taken to the negative fifth power. There's multiple ways to do this one, okay? And a lot of these is multiple ways to do this. I'm just going to show you my preferred way here. Anytime we have a negative sign that's being taken to a fraction here, so this entire fraction is being taken to a negative power, okay, I can take the reciprocal of this and then turn it into a positive, okay? So this right here, 2x over 3, I can change this to 3 over 2x, and then I'll change this, instead of being taken to the negative fifth power, this will be taken to the positive fifth power, okay? Because one thing you could do is apply this negative to every single term, and then do that top or bottom method, and then all the negatives would switch. But since every single one is negative, we can just flip the whole entire thing and get rid of that negative. Anyway, now I'm going to apply this 5 to the 3, to the 2, and to the x. So it's going to be 3 to the 5th over 2 to the 5th times x to the 5th. And 3 to the 5th power, okay, well 3 to the 4th is 81, and then 81 times another 3 is going to give us 243. over, well, 2 to the 5th power is going to give us 32, x to the 5th power. Okay, now we're done with this one. I'm going to do this one a slightly different way to just show you that it doesn't matter which way you do it, okay? I'm just going to um, take this negative 5 and apply it to every single one of our factors right away. Okay, so this is going to be 2 to the negative 5th, x to the negative 5th, over 3 to the negative 5th. Okay, and notice, if I play my top or bottom game right here, this will go to the top, this will go to the bottom, and this will go to the bottom because they're all negative. But when I switch them, they will turn positive. Then the exponents will turn positive, that is. So this will be 3 to the positive 5 over 2 to the positive 5, x to the positive 5. And we see that we get ourselves into this same situation. Okay? So that's why this works in multiple ways. For example, 5, it says, which of the expressions shown represent the volume of the cylinder where r is the radius and h is the height? Well, I didn't include any of the options that were shown in the textbook, but we're just going to figure out the volume of this cylinder. Okay? If you remember, the volume of a cylinder's formula is v equals pi r squared times the height. Okay? Well, in this case, if we notice, the radius is given to us, and the radius is equal to h over 2. So r equals h over 2. So I'm going to plug this in here to my radius in this equation. So v equals pi times, well, r squared. Okay, I'm going to put parentheses around this. So h over 2 quantity squared times h. Okay. Well, I'm going to simplify this first. So this 2 is going to be applied to the h and to the 2. So I have pi 
times h squared over 2 squared, but 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to just write that as 4, and then times h, okay? I'll put parentheses around these. Well, this h squared times this h is going to be h cubed, okay? So now I'm going to have, and this is all equal to v, so v equals pi h cubed, and then this whole thing is going to be over 4, okay? So that is how to find the volume of this given cylinder with these given dimensions. And now we're done with this one. In example six, a jellyfish emits about 1.25 times 10 to the eighth power particles of light, or photons, in 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth second. How many photons does the jellyfish emit each second? Write your answer in scientific notation and in standard form. Well, this is gonna be some good review on scientific notation, but to figure out our rate, we can just divide the number of particles emitted over the amount of time that it happened, okay? So basically this value, 1.25 times 10 to the eighth over 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds, okay? So I'm just gonna write that out. And we could easily just use a calculator here, but it's actually pretty quick to do it without a calculator. So I'm just gonna break these up, okay? I'm just gonna do 10 to the eighth and 10 to the negative fourth because I have the same base here, okay? But if we remember, I have 10 to the eighth and 10 to the negative fourth, they have the same base. So that means I can subtract their exponents. So this is gonna be 10 to the eight minus negative four, but eight minus negative four, that's the same as eight plus four. So this exponent is gonna be 10 to the 12th power. So 10 to the 12th power times, and then 1.25 over 6.25. But if you recognize this, 1.25 over 6.25 is the same thing as 1 fifth. This is 1 fifth times 10 to the 12th power, okay? And you could do this out as well, okay? Well, 1 fifth is the same thing as 0 0.2. Once again, you could do that out. But this is going to be 0 0.2 times 10 to the 12th power. But if you remember, in scientific notation, I need this number, this initial number, to be in between one and 10, okay? So greater than or equal to one and less than 10. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as two. So if I move the decimal here, this is gonna be two. But remember, if I move the decimal here, I need to reduce one of my tens here. So this is not gonna be 10 to the 12th power, this is gonna be 10 to the 11th power. So this is my rate in scientific notation. And then to write this in standard form, okay, this is gonna be two with 11 zeros, okay? So I take my decimal place here and then move it 11 times to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Fill all of these with zeros. Okay, and then I'm gonna rewrite this to make it look nice. So one, two, So now I'm just gonna put commas in, okay? So every three, starting from here. Just gonna be one right there, one right here, and one right here, okay? So this is 200 billion. Okay, now if I look back up to figure out what my units are, it's particles of light, or photons, and seconds. So my rate is two times 10 to the 11th photons per second, or 200 billion photons per second. Anyway, now we're done with this one.